Hello everyone. Welcome to My English My Life, an online program to learn uh, English from class 6 to class 12. In that today we are going to have a beautiful session with our second year, inter second year English first essay. Uh, it was a beautiful one which was written by Ajij Ajim Premji. We can say he was one of the leading uh, writer and educationalist, we can say uh, a philanthropist, the tricon of business tricon, a great man. Actually, one more video has been uploaded by uh, in the YouTube from this listen response instead of reacting, which was written by same Azim Premji. So this is a new edition of the textbook. So today we are having a beautiful one that is called Dancing in the Rain. The entire essay, so I'm not giving a, a brief uh, explanation. So I'm going to give a detailed information regarding this essay. So this Dancing in the Rain was a beautiful essay which was written by Azim Premzi. So here he is concentrating on one of the major issues or uh, is called child labor. So commonly we will feel that uh, child labor means who is working in the factories, industries, we will feel that. But he is going to give a different uh, meaning for the child labor. So meaning of labor means forcing a child to do work or forcing a child to do some work without their interest. So without considering whether they are interested or not, forcing them to do some work, any work, whatever it is, it is called labor. So whether it is reading, especially you lost these words when you were in the school, uh, especially reading, uh, making them to read thoroughly without having any uh, free time. Actually, you may be studied your, in your ninth standard. There is an essay called Homework in your ninth class English textbook. Maybe everybody remembers that a beautiful uh, essay of showing what was the major intention behind homework and what are the demerits and disadvantages of giving heavy homework we have been studied in our ninth standard itself so same on basis of the same point here Azim Premji is going to give a beautiful anecdotes means a brief stories in mentioning concentrating on a, one of the major issue in the present education system so commonly as a parents what we will feel that if we make our child to study for more for a long time we will feel they will learn more but it's absolutely wrong all round development is needed they have to time they have to play they have to read they have to move with their friends so that everything is important if you lose if you make them lose something that is not full-fledged life for example in our body part if we lose something we are not full-fledged we are physically challenged we are not full-fledged human beings the same thing here because we lost some for example i lost my arm so will you call me a complete body? No, I didn't have arm. Then you can call me a physically challenged man. So same thing here, children. Azim Premji is going to concentrate a big issue which was uh, going in the minds of every parent. He is going to draw their attention towards the reality and what was the truth. So that was the greatest uh, thinking of I explained them. It is attempt to make the parents to draw their attention towards the words of. Azim Premzi, a great uh, educationalist and in the Azim, uh, the founder and director of uh, Azim Premzi University. So we know very well about Azim Premzi. Let's begin what he is going to teach us today in this essay, Dancing in the Rain. Commonly, let me give the introduction about the title, Dancing in the Rain. <coughs> commonly, if any child, if it rains, commonly we will feel that every child uh, will come out of the homes and we will play under the rain because especially the first rain monsoon rain we will come out of the homes and we will dance in the rain so now it is it was entirely different what was the difference and what happened why the title has to be mentioned as dancing in the rain whether it was a real dance or what was the intention of Azim Premji mentioning that dancing in the rain as the title of this essay. Let's read it. <clears throat> One often hears of the high prevalence of the child labor in our country. Of the many reports I have read, perhaps the most disturbing was a report on the condition 
of child employed by zari factories in delhi mumbai and other parts of india it grieves me to imagine children exposed to such inhumanity so now <clears throat> he heard in the news and he read many articles that showing that many many children especially in our country in our own country were working in factories especially in the metropolitan cities like mumbai hyderabad we can say that hyderabad delhi and other parts of india they are working in the factories especially we call as child laborers imagine children my dear friends you are now 15 16 years old maybe plus 2 so you are nearly 17 years old so when you are looking about your same age or <coughs> below your age maybe many times we have seen the children working in the factories industries shops especially restaurants hotels we have seen many times when you have seen them what was your first reaction when you look at a child who is working in the shops or in the factories or in a hotels restaurants or anywhere else what was your first reaction when you look at them what was your first reaction maybe you may feel uh courtesy towards or kind towards them or will you go for asking them what is your problem what made you to work here why you came to work in this place what was your reaction when you look at a child uh, at your age or below or above your age what was your first reaction maybe you may not consider that as a problem or sometimes we may feel if you are a little bit uh, a uh, human means very kind immediately will go and ask hey tell me what happened why you are working here uh, do you have any problem or you don't have money or why you are working in this place or don't you have father or mother we will ask sometimes of course i will ask definitely and if it is a, a common problem definitely i will make a call to 1098 uh, the child helpline immediately uh, i will inform them because a child should get education that was very very important that was very very important my sincere advice for you if you have seen any boy or any girl uh, below 15 16 years who are working in the shops or in the hotels or anywhere else you just inquire and give information to 1098 a child helpline and make them to get education it is your primary responsibility if you do that really it was very happy thing because because of you somebody will get education because of you somebody will get some position in their for their lives so you will be very happy for that and the boy or girl who you have saved their life there will be a greatest thing in your life you never forget that so here ajit premji has been concentrating on the same thing here he had read many articles and heard in the news channels that the biggest problem in india is child labor so let us see what he is going to give us an explanation regarding child labor because all they are working in the factories and he is going to give us another illustration regarding child labor let's read it robbing children of their childhood is a criminal act and our society must weed this malice out of the root but where does the root lie before you attempt an answer let me give you an anecdote from the other end of the social spectrum so <clears throat> what is a child labor means very simple explanation is given robbing a childhood means taking away one's freedom very simple taking away one's freedom is called child labor especially child's freedom is a child labor nowadays it was very very common uh, in our india because we are taking everybody's time as a friend you will take your friend's time and you know other thing a child is not having any time they have to do their own work let me give he is also giving a great explanations uh, by giving some anecdotes means a small stories a brief stories uh, which he had seen in his own life means in his family who are working in the company so he had seen a, a, ma, a girl who is working uh in his company's father's daughter so he is going to give an example for this so what is his intention regarding 
child labor maybe we may think that child labor is working in factories industry something but he is going to give us another explanation regarding child labor let's see it <coughs> a colleague a colleague in vipro has a child studying in the standard of 9 <coughs> of a reputed school in bangalore this child wakes up at 5 am and studies for an hour before going to school she returns from school at 4 pm and rushes for her iit entrance exam coaching class at 6 pm she has tuitions for two hours post dinner she spent an hour or more on homework i asked her when she gets time to play she replied that she doesn't play she gets half an hour for free time each day which she spends watching her favorite serial on television she also added that board exams and entrance exams are very important and that all that you only get one chance so now he is saying clearly give an example about a girl who is studying class 9 so he is talking to the girl and asking that her schedule and she said as usual when you are in the college 5 o'clock getting up and early morning study hours getting up again coming back from the college by 4 o'clock again getting up and going for the study hour so that was up to 10 30 we are having the same when you in the first year so here especially in chaitan and our colleges who are studying there that is the regular activity from 5 to 10 30 12 11 o'clock so after that they have their regular homework preparation for the examinations so same thing here children here a girl who is studying in ninth started getting up five o'clock every day coming from school 4 pm and again getting up and fresh up and uh, going for IIT entrance examination IIT very importantly because every teacher every parent was worrying about IIT when they are going to have to write IIT entrance exam when they complete their plus two three years so good preparation is good because we need a, a pre-planning everything so that is very needed and later uh, again tuitions for two hours and dinner and again after that two after all the work she will have only 30 minutes to do her work I'm saying the word to do her work remaining is not her work because sometimes parents will force hey you go for IIT you go for this tuition you go for there there so we will force our child the girl is not having a time for playing then how physically we need we need physical activities or else we'll get a lot of obesity problem you can see nowadays fourth uh, fifth class children sixth class children they are becoming very fatty obesity why they're not having physical games most of the schools they're not even having pt times they didn't have any physical education time nobody knows in uh, some reputed colleges school in schools nobody knows games because they didn't have time for playing games they will feel that playing games is a uh, wasting of time playing games is wasting of their energy they will feel that only reading reading will give them marks marks is important than everything they will feel they will feel that so here Ajim Premji is giving an illustration about a girl's life here she is having a 30 minutes of time per day in 24 hours she is having only 30 minutes to do her own work that is watching TV free time then remain all study 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 of course we need education at the same time we need everything I said I said if I lost something in my body I am not full fledged I am physically challenged so games are needed free times needed spending with friends moving out with friends playing games uh, spending time with television in front of television or talking with parents father mother so these are all very very important without of all these things if they are forcibly making them to do some work that is called child labor here Ajim Premji is giving a, a great uh, different meaning for child labor we will feel that we will consider that till now child labor is working somewhere but if anyone takes any child's freedom that is child labor here the girl is forcibly forcibly making to complete the tasks tuitions IIT entrance and classes and she was saying that I uh, entrance exams is only once we can get a chance later we won't get a chance to write an entrance exam or board exam so we have to be very well of course we have to do be very well but at the same time we have to know all our important physical activities are important 
but nowadays there was no physical education physical education for many students especially who are studying in the reputed schools they didn't have any time for playing also so how pathetic situation we are in now a days is the condition of the child different from the child in a jari factory so straight question so there in the factory who is working in the factory they are forcibly working there in the factory from morning to evening the same thing here the girl also working forcibly from morning to evening without any break without any uh, relaxation without any free time continuously from morning 5 to 9 uh, night 11th or 11 o'clock or 12 30 she was working so then what was the difference between the boy or a girl working in the factory and about regarding this girl there was no difference there was no difference so this is called child labor this is called child labor when i look at children i wonder whether they have time to play with friends to meet interesting people to explore the world and to follow their curiosity when the first monsoon showers begin i would think that the street would be full of children rushing headlong into the rain dancing and playing however i think today the rain falls on empty streets so here the title came here the why he said the dancing in the rain so commonly the first monsoon rains everybody will be uh, out of the homes we will play under the rain but now nobody was coming out of the rain, out of the homes because they have busy works reading 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 so now everybody was busy in the work so nobody was coming out and playing dancing in the rain it was raining rains fall on the empty streets nobody was in the street when it rains olden days we can see uh, we have many songs we have many songs we have seen many songs there uh, in the rain so if it rains everybody will come out and they will play but nowadays nobody was coming out nobody because they don't have free time everything was taken away there was a famous dialogue uh, uh, in a movie called bombarillo and there the hero will say everything has done by you nothing he didn't give any chance for me you only selected my dress you only choose in my study you only choose in what i have to do you only choose in me what type of which type of bike i have to wear you have chosen everything even from my shirt pant watch and everything everything what i have to do you have chosen everything then where is my time where is my choice I have my own interest. I have my own uh, something to think, something to do. I have something in my mind, but you didn't have any preference for myself. You have chosen everything. Nowadays, it was very, very common. If a boy burns, if a girl gets, immediately they will choose. Ah, I want to make you a doctor. I want to make you an engineer. No parent is asking the child what was his or her interest. As a parent, we have to know their interests in which field they were interested we may feel that only engineering doctor is the greatest profession in the world what about player so we need every profession i'm saying a one more word please keep in your mind professions won't make you high or great the dedication the commitment what you have given to the profession will make you high we have many cricketers but we will remember Sachin Tendulkar or MS Dhoni because they given something to the they contributed something to the cricket we have many presidents of India, but why we are still remembering about uh, APJ Abdul Kalam? We have many prime ministers, still we are remembering Jawaharlal Nehru because the commitment, what they have given to the profession, to the field, that was important. So nowadays, every parent was thinking that engineering doctor, engineer doctor, engineer doctor. But you know, know what is your child's interest? Ask them whether they want to go for engineering, whether they want to do medicine, whether they are going to choose any singing, uh, singing competitions or whether they are going to choose a music industry. So what is their interest? Please ask your child. Let them talk. Let them share their feelings. Give you a free time to talk. Then you will come to know the real interest of your child. Nowadays, everybody was doing the mistake. That is called child labor. As a parent, as a mother, as a father, you are forcefully making your daughter, your son to do something that is called child labor. It is a biggest criminal act. Next here. This is my friends. In the new Indian reality in our villages, in our slums and in our metropolitan 
high rises whatever the reasons poverty uh, societal aspiration apathetic individuals and organizations or just the burden of circumstances the reality is that our children are straight jacket so here our children become very well restricted we are not allowing them to go out of the home we are not making them to talk with their friends we are not allowing them to play with their friends because oh no don't go with them they are very bad don't go with them they will spoil your life so then what they will learn they need they need everyone in their life of course their child will have a time because somebody will have a great writing skill but uh, if they are writing something hey don't do this one you go and study somebody have a great artistic nature painting if there somebody was painting your father will go hey don't paint don't waste your time go and read their interest is to paint something let them encourage encourage them with which field they are interested encourage my dear parents please encourage your son or daughter in which area they are interested know their interest and let them encourage so this is our new india what is whatever the poverty or other situations whatever it is that is secondary but you know the interest of your child without knowing of your interest of your child if you make them to do something else they won't read many times we have seen many suicide cases forcibly they are joining in some colleges they are making to study for engineering or medicine their interest is different and parents interest were different so with that forcefulness many students were committing suicide because unable to control the emotions they can't they can't regret the word of father or mother they can't say against the father or mother so unable to do all those things uh, they can't study because they are that is not their interest they can't say against the father or mother so unable to bear all this condition they are committing suicides they are ending up life so my dear parents don't make a mistake understand your sons and daughters intention and their interest and let them encourage and be a great father and mother the final indicator of a country's independence is the way its children live are children free from the malaise of poverty and hunger are they free from the burden of parental aspiration are they free from norms of social condition are we ensuring the curiosity of our children continues to burn and it is not stamped out are they free to explore the world to realize their unique potential and thereby help discover the true potential of society itself so biggest questions one after one question after question question after question as if prem ji is asking a straight forward question to every father at the same time who are listening this a video and watching this video so he is asking a straight question are we making your child to free or are we free from the burden of the parental aspiration means parental aspiration means simple your father what your father will feel you have to do it your father decides to make you as a doctor whatever it is they will make you to become doctor but what about your interest engineer what about your interest or some other physician or some other doctor whatever the field most probably nowadays every parent is interested in engineering and doctor if all become doctors if all become engineers who will teach for them we need teachers how they will get entertained they need players any game they need musicians every field every profession is great in my sense every one we need every one is needed in the society if no professions only doctors engineers what about the society where will we get entertainment we will get enjoyment we will have fun we will have comedy nothing will be there only reading doctor and medicine engineer finish so that is not the real life so that is the biggest question he is asking that uh, and are we free from the norms of social conditioning especially the social conditioning were very very uh, common in every family especially orthodox families they won't allow the son or daughter to go out of the homes and talk with the friends to have a free talk so because they can't share everything to us we as a parents uh, they as a son daughter they can't share everything to you so they will talk to their friends they can share the problems and they can because same age group they can discuss everything clearly and they can be free from the same situation but we we didn't give any time we won't give the time to spend with the friends we won't make them to go out of the homes so that is the biggest problem what we are making and what are the problem we are facing from the parents side so gandhi said that the greatest lessons in life are learned from children 
not from the learned man. A child will fearlessly try before giving up. As adults fearing failure, we give up even before we try. A child is inherently curious about the world, about relationships, about wanting to understand how things work. As adults, our blinkered and conditioned self perverts us and from truly exploring without prejudice. For a child, what she does is meaningful in its own right. As an adult, we useless, usually link every action to an external reward of money or recognition. So here, he remember one more word what Gandhi had told to us. Gandhi said very simple that greatest lessons in life are learned from the children. Because if you take children, they will do everything as an innovation, as a creativity. They, because they don't know what was the reason. They will try and they will get something. So they won't bother about the reason. Just they will try. But as an adult, what will think? Oh, if I am doing some work, whether I'm getting money or not, how much I have to spend, how much I will get. If I spend 100 rupees, whether I will get 1000 or not. If not, I won't do that. But that is not a child life. Child will do anything, whatever they want. They will try without bothering about whether they will get failure, whether they will get success. They won't bother. Just they will try. So further to only many lessons. First, when they commit any mistake, first if you try, then we will come to know whether it is success or failure. So if you fail, you will become a leader. You can you won't repeat the same mistake again. But adults are not like that. They will guess something before trying, they will stop. But children are not like that. They will try whether they will success or fail that is secondary. For them is trying is important. And for that only Gandhi said one word, great lessons will learn from the life of children because they will try before thinking whether it is success or failure. So that is the word said by Mahatma Gandhi and he quoted the words of Gandhi in his essay by Azib Prem Singh. I did not learn how to be a father for uh, from mammals. Whatever little I learned about being a parent, I learned by observing my children and letting them to teach me. Similarly, I think our teachers could grow enormously by learning from their students. So here he is saying that I he said I don't I didn't learn anything from uh, somebody else how to become a good father. Why? Because how he is saying that what the child needs. <coughs> for example, the child is. Uh, trying to talk to me. Okay, I will spend time with them. So what a child wants, I learn from them. So whatever they need, I try to fulfill. So that is a good father's life. As a teacher, whatever we know that is not teaching is important. What a student will expect from us, what a student will try to get from us, we have to do it. We have to give it. So that is a real teaching. So we can teach everything from a textbook by reading and everything. That is not important. What a student will think and what is the idea of a student when they were listening to the lesson. We have to know them and we have to fulfill their needs. Then they will be very happy. So here Ajim Premji was clearly saying that here. I didn't learn anything from the mammals. Just I look at my children. I look at them, how they were learning, what they were doing, what they were want, what they're expecting. So I learned and I did for them. That is that made me as a great father. The same thing as a teacher or father, brother, sister, what they will expect from us, we have to get. That is was that was very, very simple what Ajim Premji has teaching us today. And next one. <coughs> We will then refrain from pushing our knowledge down their young minds and begin the democratic process of being joint learners as we discuss, uh, discover and understand our will. I believe a powerful force for empowerment is to have motivated teachers who are learners first, teachers second. Only then will we stop trying to mold children into adult likeness. Only then will we let them blossom so very very important words so whatever the teacher was teaching you as the teacher what we have to know is what is your interest so on basing of interest your interest especially your interest we have to teach we have to give we have to maul on basing of your interest for example if you want to become an engineer we have to maul you in a proper order so we have to choose whatever we have to teach in a correct path, not on the parental likeness. 
means read, 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 read. That is not reading. If you read always, you will get a mental. In universities, we have seen many people, especially on the roads, who are well educated. They become mad because of reading, reading, reading. They become. We have to fulfill everything. We need time for friendship. We need time for reading. We need time for fun, spending with time. Everything is needed. And he is saying one more word as a teacher. He is saying one word to me that is not like teachers. First, we are the learners. So when, when I was reading the text, I will feel, oh, what a student will fail. What a student will expect from this lesson. So I have to learn it first. Then I have to teach it. So learners first teaches second. So that makes you to be very, very happy and that makes a student to blossom. If you teach whatever on the textbook, if I force you to do something, if you are as like your father, mother, if you force something to do in your life, nothing was there. Simply the life will go on. But there was no happiness. There was no blows. There was no choice. Nothing will be there. Just life will go on. But if we do what we desire, that will give us a great satisfaction and the life with the great happiness what Ajay Premji was teaching us. If India has to develop economically, socially, intellectually and culturally, we must empower those most vulnerable to social the cat, our children. Let us resolve to give our children the freedom of childhood. Let us change our schools from the being textbook prisons and laboratories to explore of exploration. Let us change homes from being tuition centers to playgrounds a part of art and a sport. India will be radiant when our children are free to dance in the rain. That was the end of the essay. Then he is giving a good conclusion. He is saying that uh, we have to change. If you want to see India to be a great country from the beginning, from many years, I studied, my father studied, you are studying, my grandfather studies. India is a developing country. India is a developing country. It will be a developed country because our education system should be changed. If you want to see your own country economically, socially, culturally, intellectually to be empowered, we have to change our system of a teaching or education. That is saying that he is saying the word, one word, let us change schools of being textbook prisons. School should not be only the textbook prisons. We have to teach everything. Games should be there. Playing, cultural activities, dance, singing, and everything should be there in the schools and the colleges. And next, laboratories of exploration. So everything they have to experience, everything they have to learn by themselves. That makes, for example, if I teach you something, you will learn. If you do it practical, you know what is the merit and you know what is the demerit. So that what Ajim Premzi. So exploration to the laboratories means experimental teaching, experimental life. And next, let us change homes from being tuitions, not a tuition centers. Home should be like a playgrounds of art and sports. Everything we have to encourage then your son, your daughter will be free to dance in the rain. Means he is saying that now children are in the cage. He wanted to make everybody to come out of the cage and to dance freely in the rain. And when a child will come out of their home to dance freely in the rain, that is the real independence and there will be no child labor. Now we are seeing that we are in the child labor system. Forcibly, everybody forcibly reading, forcing them to read, 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 read continuously for hours together, hours together. We are reading, 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 reading. But what about their physical energy? By continuously reading, what about their physical activity? They will become obese. They are becoming obesity and becoming very fat and unhealthy because of they are getting many diseases. You can find nowadays uh, below 20 years they are becoming diabetes patients, sugar, BP because of all these systems. So we have to change, make your son, make your daughter to free and as a student, choose your goal. Don't choose anything by your father, mother force because they can't study for you. You have to choose your goal, you have to choose your aim and you have to work for it. So choose what you want to become in the future and make and convince your father and reach your success in the future days. I hope you enjoy this lesson. 
please share and subscribe and hope you i will meet you in the next session until then bye bye